Hi, my name is uh, Nima Magari, and I'm a faculty at University of Florida. Today, my talk is going to be an overview on oversampling data converters. First, I want to talk about the need for the uh, oversampling data converters. And one of the tangible uh, applications of data converters can be related to audio, and a lot of oversampling converters over the years were used for audio conversion. So if you look at the human ear, it can detect signal range from 16 hertz to roughly 22 kilohertz. So if we use a Nyquist sampling, which means we have to sample almost or a bit larger than the twice the bandwidth. So it is common to sample it at 48 kilohertz. So suppose we have this input sine wave and we feed it to this ADC, which is a flash ADC, and each of these references is generated by an analog comparator. Now, the output sine wave digitized would look something like this. And when we do this quantization, we want to see how accurate our uh, reconstructed sine wave would be. So if you take an SNR, in this particular example, you see that uh, here we have SNR of about 20 dB. But this is nowhere near the audio resolution that we, we would like to have. Um, the other technique is actually if we oversample this, or in another sense, if we take a portion of the bandwidth of the signal only. In this example, you can see I've oversampled this signal by a factor of two. Therefore, we should see an increase in the signal to noise ratio because the power of the noise has been reduced. Now, if I want to see, for instance, how much I need to get to 100 dB resolution, how much oversampling I need, um, the, an uh, the answer is I would need a sampling rate of greater than 4.4 terahertz, which shows that is not practical and it's extremely inefficient way to achieve such a resolution using only oversampling. The flash ADC that I just showed you uh, is, again, very fast. It's fastest among all of the types of ADC, but the problem is the hardware grows exponentially with the resolutions that we want, and it's limited to four to five bits. And here it shows a uh, block diagram of the uh, flash, and in reality, you have offset and mismatch between the comparators and the resistor ladder references. Therefore, um, the more number of bits you want, the more critical these mismatches will become. On the other hand, we can go to a multi-step ADC, and the multi-step ADC, we can have several steps, uh, and, but to be able to do so, we often need to extract the quantization error of one of the stages and feed it to the next stages, as shown in the block diagram here. And as soon as we do this, we end up needing an op -amp, either in form of switch capacitor or continuous time operation. Now, this was used to be the main approach for many applications uh, up to recently, and still it's a mainstream. However, there are some challenging uh, aspects of this, especially in advanced uh, CMOS processes. To look at this more carefully, uh, most of the multi-step require ADCs require an op -amp. For an n-bit ADC, suppose 12-bit, 14-bit ADC, the op -amp should have a minimum DC gain of 2 to the power of n. So if you have 12-bit ADC, your op amp gain should be larger than 76 dB in all corner cases and process variations. This excludes any possible calibration. However, uh, large gain also uh, has uh, the limitation of the gain bandwidth. And at the same time, we need a large bandwidth for settling given this uh, equation, which it's, uh, it's a textbook uh, equation. On the other end, if you look at the CMOS scaling trend, you can see that the supply has dropped substantially, so we lose a lot of signal power. And the GMR out of the transistor, especially the R out of the transistor, has substantially reduced as we go to the advanced nodes. Therefore, it would be very difficult to design an op amp with very large gain and very large bandwidth at the same time and make it extremely power efficient. This uh, plot act shows the actual uh, data from the ISSC and VLSI in the past 10 years on different architecture types and shows the trend line between the performance 
and the technology node. And as you can see, the Delta Sigma ADCs still is the predominant structure for the higher resolution type ADCs. Now, you can see here that the resolution has been declined. In a sense, the effective number of bits has been declined. This does not necessarily mean that the new architectures are not suitable for analog digital converter, but rather that we have moved to using larger bandwidth instead of trying to get larger dynamic range or uh, effective number of bits. From here on, I'm going to talk about mainly on uh, combining a technique called noise shaping in oversampling architectures. So the, it is known that in ADCs, we can model the power of the quantization error with a ra uniformly randomly distributed signal, as shown here, is a single-sided, and with the power of LSP square over 12 times FS. Well, if you oversample this uh, power, uh, the ADC, what we'll have, we'll have the same power spread across a larger bandwidth. Now, we can select the bandwidth to be much smaller, so as shown here, to have some increased signal-to-noise ratio, as I showed an example earlier. But this is not extremely beneficial, because every time we double the oversampling ratio, we only get 3 dB improvement in signal-to-noise ratio. Instead of going with oversampling alone, we can combine it with something called noise shaping. And the idea is to multiply this quantization noise by a high pass filter. Once we do this, the quantization noise will be shaped and will take the form of this high pass filter. And therefore, you can see the power of the quantization noise in the bandwidth of interest would be minimized. Now, this transfer function can be a high pass transfer function for low pass modulator or a band pass. Uh, for bandpass modulators. And here is the simulated waveform of uh, this structure. In this case, I'm using an oversampling ratio of a thir 32 and only one and a half bit quantizer or uh, two comparators in the uh, quantizer. And as you can see, we can get a substantial uh, signal to noise improvement. And the way that, if you look at the time domain representation of this, you can see the, although we have only two comparators, but they are trying to average out uh, and predict, uh, and sh uh, with averaging, they try to estimate the input signal very, very accurately. Now, how do we implement this structure? Basically, all we need to do is to take the quantization error of an any ADC, for instance, a flash ADC, and feed it back and subtract it from the input signal with the delay. And this gives us a first order high pass transfer function multiplied by the quantization error as shown here. And you can calculate the equations and mathematics for this, and you end up that your signal, uh, signal to noise ratio will improve by your OSR cube, OSR being oversampling ratio. And this is only for the first order uh, delta modulator. This structure is actually called delta modulator and is widely used uh, in. Uh, uh, digital to analog converters. In analog to digital converters, we can simply uh, move the delay inside the loop and we end up with the structure that is shown here, which is awful called delta sigma modulator because of the delta subtraction here and the integration uh, afterwards. That was the first order delta sigma modulator. We can increase the order to the third, fourth, fifth, by just adding more and more integrators and DACs in the structure. So this is not the only architecture that you can use. We can use combination of feedforward and feedback, which is beyond the scope of this talk, but you can find it in uh, relevant textbooks that I show at the end of the, uh, this lecture. There, are, there is two quantity that we are interested. The signal transfer function, which is transfer function from the input to the output, and the noise transfer function. You can see the signal transfer function is basically just two delays, and the noise transfer function, in this case, is a second order case. Now, in reality, we are implementing these with, again, op amps. In this case, it's a discrete time modulator, so it's a switch capacitor op amp. And the op amps will have limited gain, and the transfer function, instead of being a nice Z minus one over one minus Z minus one, will show up on something so, uh, similar to this. You can see the A being the limited op amp gain and beta being the feedback factor of the op amp. So we would expect these to also somehow affect the performance of the modulators. Um, so here I'm plotting the ideal first order noise transfer function and the second order noise transfer function. 
And here I'm showing the more realistic uh, first order and second order where we have effectively gained for 40 dB in the in my loop architecture. You can see that the first order will uh, give us a noise floor of negative 40 dB, which is the op and gain that we use. But the second order will give us an uh, effective uh, uh, get noise floor of negative 80 dB because that's the overall loop gain. If you would have gone to the third order, we could have gone even much better. Therefore, the limited op amp gain it will change the noise transfer function rather than uh, causing uh, quantization noise leakage such as we had in multi-step or pipeline ADCs. Therefore, these structures are, are less sensitive to a lot of op amp gain variations. Now, one thing that is typically overlooked in these architectures is the ratio between the in-band and the out-of-band of the modulator. So we often are interested in the in-band power of the quantization error, as we am showing a first, a second, and a third order. Uh, as we go to the higher order, we can see the in-band power has been decreased. But at the same time, this means that the out-of-band power has increased. In a sense, it looks like a first-order lever. The more you push the in-band down, you're forcefully pushing the out-of-band a bit higher. Although the out-of-band is not of an interest in terms of calculating your signal-to-noise ratio in the transfer function, but it will affect the stability of the modulator given that this is a feedback uh, system. And every time we have a feedback system, we have to think about the stability. And with a simple calculation, we can see that given that the quantization error is between positive and negative LSV over two, um, the maximum, uh, the out of band gain affects, because as a highest power, affects the amount of power that the quantization sees, the amount of the power of the signal. We call it VQ here, and it can be achieved with this operation. So the maximum out of band gain minus one times LSP over two. And if this ends up being larger than the linear range of the quantization error, the loop becomes unstable. So we should always have a uh, good analysis on the stability of the modulator, given that anything typically be higher than third order runs into stability problems. There is another solution to this to remove the stability criteria by going to multi-stage noise shaping or cascaded modulators, and that's employing multiple lower order loop and feed the quantization error of the first loop to the second loop. And here I'm showing a two loop architecture and subtract the output via digital filters. And again, here the notations are as follows for a signal noise and a noise loop filter, and the uh, red part here shows the digital noise cancelling filter. And if you work out the math, which is fairly straightforward, you need, you, you'll realize that if the H1 digital filter times noise transfer function of the first loop is equal to the signal transfer function of the second loop times the digital uh, transfer function at the output, then we will only see the quantization error of the last stage at the output shaped by the overall order of the modulator. So if you have three first order modulator, you get third order noise shaping. The problem with these structures is, however, that the, uh, there's a mismatch between the analog loop filter coefficient and the digital equivalent one. We want to match analog transfer function with digital ones. Therefore, here the circuit imperfections will cause uh, possible leakage of the quantization error to the output, and unfortunately this leakage is not noise-shaped. Therefore, there are ways to minimize this leakage. One is a larger number of quantization levels to reduce the quantization error itself, but that runs to that linearity and power hungry and uh, a lot of loading on the loop. Uh, we can have a higher gain of op amp to reduce uh, the denominator here, but then again, we wanted to avoid that uh, problem in the first place, so there's a technology challenge there. And we can, uh, there are some works on digital calibration, but that also adds power and complexity. Now, and the last thing I want to also mention that, uh, so although I showed mainly uh, the uh, discrete time, uh, recently, there's been much more work on continuous time delta sigma modulator. Uh, as shown here, the continuous time delta sigma modulator uses a continuous time integrator. It has several ad key advantages over the discrete counterpart because it has no sampling switches, therefore no sampling capacitor. The DAC is often continuous time uh, is either resistive based or current based, and it relaxes the settling and slewing. However, it comes with some other disadvantages, and that is the DAC pulse, shown here, is very sensitive to the phase noise of the clock or clock jitter. 
And it, this, uh, the, these uh, structures are typically have resistive loading on the output of the uh, op amp. Therefore, um, it, they, have, they see a low impedance output. And they are mostly limited to single loop because of this large RC variation. It would be almost impractical to make them in a multi-loop architecture. So in conclusion, Delta Sigma modulators provide an alternative approach to quantization, and that is to do oversample and noise shape at the same time. They are less sensitive to many of the CMOS scaling drawbacks in, in context of analog, especially the GMRO reduction, because you can get away with a very low gain op amp and still have a significant signal to noise ratio at the cost of sacrificing the bandwidth for the resolution. Stability is always a concern if you're uh, designing anything above third order or if you're using very low number of quantization bits, such as one bit or one and a half bit. In recent years, there have been much more focus on continuous time delta sigma modulators because they can operate much, much faster than discrete time. Uh, they have better power efficiency. And many integrated systems on SOCs already have a low phase clock that you can use it for your uh, clocking of the loop. And, but they are mainly limited to single loop with few exceptions uh, that are work out there. Uh, even to these days, there are a lot of new innovative and enabling architectures that are still worked on from on the circuit level and on the uh, architecture level for both academia and industry. Um, here are some ad additional material and references uh, for your study. Thank you.